This video will give you directions on creating tab stops. Also included in this video, I will show you how to do leader tab stops, which make reading horizontally much easier for the user, as you can follow the dots, dashes, or lines horizontally across the page. The reason why we would use tab stops would be because we do not want to insert a table, yet we want information to be included in a column fashion. So I have set my headings as period, teacher, student, and GPA, just for a sample. And I have left a space between each one of my words. Those are going to be my headings. And the next thing I want to make sure is that my ruler is up. It's very important that the ruler is up because that's where you'll connect your tab stops. If your ruler is not showing, click on the View tab and then move over to the Show Group. And the first in the list is Ruler. Put a check mark next to Ruler and your ruler will appear. So it's View, Show Group, and Ruler. Now far left corner will show you the tab stops and you need to click through and each time you click it'll change to a different stop. So the first stop that I want to find is the one that looks like an L and that's it. That's going to be what we refer to as being our left tab stop, left aligned. So when I include that, all I need to do is make sure it's over here on the left and then I select where I'd like to include it by clicking right on the ruler and it will put that tab stop in. Now I want these tab stops to be applied to these headings. Therefore I'm going to highlight it to tell the computer where I want the tab stops to be applied. And I'm going to apply my first one right here now you know normally when you use the tab key on the computer's keyboard, it moves over one half inch every time it's pushed. My first tab stop, I'm going to place at the one half inch mark. And now that I have pushed the button down, I have applied my left tab stop. I want to do one more, that's the left tab stop, and I'm putting that one at two. Now, there's really no reason why I have to have them at these specific numbers. I'm just trying to space it so that I get enough space for each one of these columns. These tabs may be moved over later if I don't feel like they're in the right place. The next one I want to do, since I've done two left tab stops, and what that means is the P in period will line up with this first one the T in teacher will line up with the second one. The T, the last letter of the word student, is going to line up with the one that I'm going to put in next, which is going to be a right tab stop. So I go to the left and click on my tab stop. That's going to be a centered one. I want the one that's on the right, like that. So I choose the tab stop I need. Now I'm going to place it where I want it to go. And I'm going to say I just would like it to go right here. So I just click on my ruler and now you'll see I have a right tab stop. And the next one that I want is for the GPA column and I'd like that to be centered. Now when I place a tab stop that's a center tab stop, it means the information that would go under that tab stop is going to be centered around a point, no matter how long the word is it's going to be centered around that particular tab stop point. So I want to choose this one that's straight up. Now that one looks like it's straight up centered, but it also has a dot beside it. That's my decimal tab stop, and that would be used if I were using a lot of numbers. I'm not going to in this case, so I need to click through until I find the one. Here's my left, there's the center one. That's my center tab. That's the one I want. And I'm going to place that right over here by the 6, which means that when I put a number or something under the GPA, it will be centered around that center point. So those are my tab stops now. I'm going to click after my headings, P, 
period teacher student GPA. Those are my headings. And I'm going to push the Enter key because as I do that, it will keep the formatting that I have chosen for, for that particular set of headings. Before I do that, I'm going to click the four period and push my tab button. So now you'll see that that P is lined up with my first tab stop. I'm putting it before the T in teacher. And on this one, the T should be lined up with the tab stop that's a two. So I'm pushing the tab key. And yes, it's lined up with the two. And the next one is for student. The last letter in the word student is going to be lined up because this is a right tab stop will be lined up with that tab stop. So my cursor is in front of the F of student. I push the tab key one time. And now then that T should be lined up with this one. And the last one is GPA. I put my cursor in front of it, push the tab key once, and that should be centered on this tab stop. Now, to keep that formatting, I put my cursor after those headings. I've got the headings where I want them. They're where they are because of the tab stops that I inserted. My cursor's after the last heading. Pushing the Enter key makes the formatting stay for the next line. And I would like a little space between. Now I'm going to begin to put my information in. Pushing my tab button for my first one, and this is where I put the first period. Push the tab button again, and I will put in the first teacher's name. Push my tab button again, and now I can apply the student's name. And the student's name, the very last letter of their name, is going to line up with the right tab stop. So let's just make up a name here. Let's do Kelly Green, and I'm going to hit the tab button again and put in her GPA. All right, push the Enter key, and that keeps my formatting for the next row. Push my tab key for the first entry, and this is going to be the second period. And I'm putting in another teacher's name. Notice how they are all staying in their columns. I'm pushing the tab button again to put in another name of a student. Push the tab key again and apply that student's GPA. Push the Enter key so the formatting stays for the next row. And I see that I misspelled here. So I will go back and fix it. I'm going to push the Enter key to get to the next row. Push my tab key to get to the first column that I want to have. I'm just doing this far enough so that you can see how things are nicely lined up without even creating a table. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put the leader dots or dashes or lines in, making it easy to read columned text. So let's enter another name here, and then I'm going to show you how to do the leader. Okay. And let's give her her GPA. I'm pushing the Enter key. Before I show you the leader part, let's say I don't really like all the space I have between student and GPA. And I'd like to move this one over a little bit. If I want to do that, I need to highlight all this information that I have included for the tab stops. And then I take the tab stop that I want to change, and I just slide it over. And you'll see the information is going to come right along with it. So I'm going to put it, oops, that's a little too far. Again, if you hit one that you don't like, you just do the undo. And it'll bring it right back and put it over where you want it. There we go. Now, if you decided that you no longer wanted a particular tab stop, and I'm going to put an extra one in here just to show you. This is on center. I'm going to put one right here. If you decide you don't want a tab stop, you put your mouse on top of the tab stop and pull straight down and it disappears. It's gone. It does not affect any information here. If you needed to add another column of information and you wanted another tab stop, 
you must make sure that you highlight the information that's going to be affected by that tab stop. If you don't highlight it, it won't work. Okay, so now we've got our information in. We know that we've got the tab stops where we want it. I like the way the columns look. I'm going to highlight my information, but I'm not highlighting my headings because I don't need to have the little dots and dashes connecting those, but I do for the information below. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my paragraph group, and that's found in the Home tab. Paragraph group is here, and in the far right corner, you have a little button here that we're going to push. So I highlighted my information, I go to paragraph group, I push the button in the bottom right corner, and then I'm going to come down to the bottom of this and click on the button that says Tabs. This is giving me the tab setting for each one of my tab stops that I've chosen. So the first one, the 0.5, actually is this first tab setting. I do not want dots, dashes, or lines going in front of the word first, second, or third. I only want to use them between the other information. So I am not going to set one for the very first one, but I'm going to the second one, which is set at 2 inches. And I'm leaving the alignment alone. The alignment is the way it is because that's the type of tab stop I put in. I'm going to use the dots, so I'm going to click on 2 and click Set. I'm going to the next tab setting at 4.5. Again, my alignment is going to be left alone. And I've got it set to right. On the leader, I'm choosing the dots again, and I'm choosing Set. The last one is my 6. I click on it. I'm leaving that set for center, and I'm choosing the 2, which is the dot, and clicking set. Now that I've set the dots for each one of those tab settings, I can click OK, and you'll see them appear. Again, I don't have anything in front, but if I had chosen to put them on the 0.5, I would have had dots in front of these not what I wanted. So I'm going to click out in the open to take off my highlighting, and that's how nice it looks. But that makes it very easy for people to follow with their eyes when there's columned information that's not put in a table that has borders on the cells.